So this battery's been dying on us a few times. We go out to the car and it just doesn't start. We jump it and then we drive it a little bit. We bring it back home and then like three days later, we try it again and it doesn't start. So the battery is slowly draining. We just drove it in here yesterday after a little bit of a drive and it's at about 12.2 volts, which is pretty good for the battery right now but we just drove it the other day, so the alternator just charged it up a little bit. First, we'll perform a low test on the battery. We'll hook positive up first, negative. With the load tester connected, you can see that's showing the 12 volts that we saw with the voltmeter. Now we're gonna go ahead and switch this switch on the bottom here, hold it there, and it's right in the bad range. So what that means is the battery has the correct amount of voltage, like we saw with the voltmeter, it had 12 volts, 12.2 volts but it can't hold the right amount of amps when a load is applied. Now we're gonna check for a bad cell just by popping off these battery caps. Now keep in mind that in each one of these cells is like sulfuric acid, so you wanna be careful. You don't wanna get it on your clothes or really touch it at all. And now we'll pop off the second cover. Now we wanna look in each one of these and just see if there's any fluid in there. And it looks like there is a little bit in each one, but it definitely looks like they're low. Now we're just gonna take a rag and wipe all this away from these holes. We don't want any of the dirt falling in there. So we wanna loosen up the negative battery terminal first and take that off. And then we're gonna go to the positive because if you keep the negative on there and then you take the positive off, if it touches the positive and a ground like a piece of the frame, it'll arc and kind of weld everything together and might electrocute you. So you need to be careful there. Now go ahead and pull that terminal off and I'll pull just out of the way. Now we can safely take off our positive, but it's still a good rule of thumb just to keep this away from any ground points. And now we'll disconnect our positive terminal. Now I'm gonna test each one of these cells. I'll just take the electrodes or the probes and put them in here. That one's at 2.0. This one's at 2.0. This one's at 2.0. This one is at 2.0, and that one's at 1.9. Judging by this test, it doesn't seem that there is any dead cells. Next, we're going to try a hydrometer test. It might be a little bit tricky to actually get some of the fluid out of here, just because it's so low. We'll see if we can get any. So we're just looking for that to come up in the green, but I'm not sure if we're actually gonna be able to get any fluid. We're able to get a little bit there. Let's see if we can get enough. So only the third cell had enough fluid that I could actually test it. And if we look at this, it's right on the barrier between the yellow and the green. We're gonna fill this up with some distilled water. We're gonna add that to the sulfuric acid. You can buy this at the store or you can just get it from your dehumidifier. All of that is purified distilled water that comes off of it from the condensation. Now we're gonna start adding this distilled water into each one of the cells. That one's drinking a lot. This is definitely drinking a lot of water. It's very empty. Now we're gonna go ahead and charge this up. So we'll put the positive on first, then the negative. All right, so it's saying that the battery is 12.1 volts. So we're gonna be putting high amps on the battery for about 10 minutes. It's been about two minutes and I can actually start to see little bubbles coming up on the water. And now we're looking to make sure all of them are bubbling the same. And actually, if you listen, you can actually hear it almost like sizzling a little bit, all the little bubbles. So we're just looking at the temperature of the battery, make sure nothing's like getting out of control. And I'm just curious to see if one spot is getting hotter than the other. So it seems like the fourth one right here is not bubbling, it seems to be the least active, and then maybe the one on the end is also not bubbling very much. The first two do seem to be the most active though. If you look in the reflection, you can see the bubbles coming up. It just seems like the fourth cell is not really active. So it's been on for about 13 minutes now, and the battery's been heating evenly, there's not a certain spot that's been getting really hot. Now you can see the cross member right here is really what's, that's a cold part but the whole battery seems to be heating evenly 
And we're gonna go ahead and shut this off, let the battery cool a little bit, and then do another cycle. All right, now we'll click the stop button, and that'll turn it off. We'll let everything cool for about 15 minutes, then we'll turn it back. Right now the battery is at about 13.1. Now that everything is cool off, we're gonna go ahead and run another cycle on the battery. This time we'll try putting it on 12 volts, 40 amps, and see if it works. It might be smart enough and just shut it off, because it knows the battery is full. So you might have to go on the start feature, but we'll see if it'll work. After about 10 seconds, it shut off. So we're just gonna have to put it into, I click the stop button, and then we're gonna have to put it back into start mode. What we're looking for is this fourth battery cell right here to start bubbling. All right, so this cell right here is the cell that we're looking for it to bubble in. So far, it hasn't. I can see the bubbles on either side, but not on that one. We're about six minutes in and I just saw a bubble on our problem cell. The other ones are definitely more active. You can see the one over to the side. That one's definitely bubbling, but the one is not quite as active, but it's starting to bubble. 10 minutes on start is about as, as long as we want to go. You can actually start to see the battery heating up a little bit now. We don't want to overheat it or anything, so we're going to turn it off every 10 minutes and let it cool for about 15 and then turn it back on and keep repeating those cycles. All right, so the battery is cooled off and we're gonna go ahead and start the next cycle and see if this cell right here actually starts bubbling. I actually just saw it start bubbling. See, there is another one. And this is the fourth cell, the one we were having problems with. It's actually starting to act up. Look at that. That is, that's good. This is the third cycle and it's definitely starting to move. Same with the cells beside it. it might be a little hard to see, but you can see the reflection changing in this one and in the other ones. That's good news. So now all the cells are bubbling, so we're gonna go ahead and redo that load test. Now we'll go ahead and disconnect these. Now we'll go ahead and hook up our load tester. So you can see we're measuring right in between 12 and 14, so it's about 13. We'll go ahead and turn on the load. And it looks like it's in the green right there. That's good. Now this battery looks a lot better. We're gonna go ahead and put those caps back on and it'll be ready to reconnect the terminals and it'll be done. So now we'll start cleaning up these connections a little bit just so whenever we hook everything back up, it'll be nice and clean. Now we're gonna put some silicone grease on it. You wanna make sure it's silicone grease. It says uh, probably on the tube itself that it says safe for battery terminals. So now some of this we'll just put on the battery terminals. We're going to put the positive on first, then the negative. Now we can go ahead and put the negative on. All right, now we're going to go ahead and start it up and make sure everything works. All right, so everything feels good first off, but really we just need to see if it'll stand the test of time, but right now everything seems great.